Excuse my uh, Vietnamese. Vietnamese is actually not my first language, but pho is my first love. We're starting this video off at a typical breakfast spot, and we're having a typical breakfast food, which is pho. This place is called Pho Kien. This pho is delicious. It's not quite as good as the one in Ho Chi Minh. So if you haven't yeah. seen that Ho Chi Minh food video, check that one out. But it's the best one in their lot so far. They have one type of pho. It's pho ba, which is beef pho. And there's two different sizes. You can get a medium or a large. Apparently this is a medium. It costs 40,000 dong. The largest 45,000 dong. No idea what the difference is because this is definitely a healthy portion to get your day started. The only drawback to this one is typically we like fresh cuts of meat in our pho and this one seems to have some kind of processed ball. But other than that, the broth is delicious. There's an abundance of herbs as always on the side and they're super friendly and helpful here. A plus, plus. plus. Dung Lot, which is one of my favorite restaurants in the lot. I don't typically have favorites, but this is one of my favorite ones, and they serve this dish called Nim Nuang. I like Nim Nuang for its simplicity, and my most rudimental breakdown of this dish is it's kind of like a hamburger without the bun, or a kebab, or like a spring roll. Now, many of you will loathe me for that description, but for those of you that are unfamiliar, it consists of ground pork mixed with herbs, fired over some charcoal, it's intensely flavored, and it has all the smokiness that you would find in, say, a barbecue in the United States. As with a lot of Vietnamese dishes, this thing comes with a garden amount of greens, fresh veggies, fried rice paper, and herbs. Assembling it is simple. You start with a sheet of rice paper, load your meats, load your greens, as many peppers as your mouth and ass can handle, roll it like you're in high school again, and dip. One thing I really love about Vietnamese dishes are all the side sauces, and this thing comes with a peanut sauce that is amazing. It's basically a mixture of peanuts, fish sauce, hoisin sauce, garlic, and tapioca sauce that gives it that Santa Claus jiggle. We're now at Mi Quang Ji. We're eating a rich pork soup that's believed to have its roots traced back to central Vietnam. The soup has some thick cuts of pork in it. It's simmered all day. Important thing to note though, this restaurant's only open from 2 to 4. And when they're out, they're out. So the dish starts off with the yellow noodles as a base, and then a huge ladle of soup comes on top of that, finished off with a scoop of peanuts. You get green veggies on the side, and the signature topping of this dish is a sesame cracker. If you like pork, bacon, shoulder, leg, loin, this is your soup. It's a really strong pork flavor, so it's the pork broth, and within the soup they give extremely generous portions of the pork itself. Each bowl costs 35,000 dong, and that's a pretty good deal for lunch. Next stop is one of my personal favorites. It is called Quan Ut Ban. They actually specialize in four dishes, but we specifically come here for the Bun Bo Hue. Don't be mistaken though, because this is kind of a small road and a lot of the restaurants serve the same dishes. You wanna to come to Ut Ban. So even though Bun Bo Hue is the name of the dish, it can be a little bit confusing because bun means noodle and bo means beef, but this dish is mostly pork. Now it gets its name from Wei, the city where it originated from. At one point during the Nguyen Dynasty, Wei was basically the imperial city. So everything that was cooked there was basically catered to the palate of royalty. So this soup is very similar to the Mi Quang soup that we got earlier. The difference is that this soup is made with lemongrass, annatto, and shrimp paste. It's extremely pork 
tasting. Typically it's only served with pork meat and they'll add little pieces of beef to kind of enhance it or to garnish it. But Oot Von gives you the option of getting it with just beef. Now when I say just beef, there are a little bit of other pieces of meat in there and one of them happens to be congealed pig blood. I know it sounds a little weird, but trust me, it's good. So again, it's salty, it embodies the flavor of pork. You can also taste a little bit of seafood in there from the uh, shrimp paste, and it's very floral as well from the lemongrass and all the other herbs that we've added in. It also comes with, oh, hold on, I gotta help my friend out. Right there, okay? It's good, okay. On the side, we have our shredded greens, we have our perilla leaf, we have basil, and then we have a bunch of lime to give it that kind of cut through of citrus. Another thing to note that differentiates Bun Bo Wei from a lot of other soups like pho and mi kuang is the cylindrical pattern of the noodle. It's not a flat noodle. All right, so we're at another restaurant, Tia Mi Tao Pao. I believe that's how you pronounce it. These guys do one thing and do it extremely well. While it's not necessarily a Vietnamese dish, I believe it has its ancestry in, somewhere in China. Uh, it's basically a Chinese wonton soup. It's served uh, with sliced pork, ground pork, and pork dumplings. It comes in a sweet, clear broth. And all I know is every time I take a bite, I want more. It tastes like a giant soup dumpling, and that's why I think I love it. On top of that, you can find all kind of enhancements on the table. There's a pepper mixture, fresh peppers, lime, and I forgot to mention, they always put tea on the table. So you serve yourself a little tea, it tastes like jasmine tea. The Chinese did rule Vietnam for quite a long time, so that's probably where the influence of the soup came from. This place is always filled with locals, and make sure to get here early because when they run out, they close down shop like you can see behind me. Something you'll notice when you're in Dalat, there's this hot soy milk sensation. The sidewalks, the alleyways, almost every corner you turn, people are sipping on hot soy milk, essentially. And it typically comes in the traditional flavor of just regular soy milk, green meat, and then some stands will also have peanut flavor. No one really knows how it became an obsession here, how the craze started, or when it started. I don't think. If you do know, let us know. But our favorite place in all of Dalat happens to be this place, Quan Han Sua. It's two carts, they're right across the street from one another. They post up every night with these little stools and red benches. Typical Vietnamese experience. You can also get it to go. Now on average, you're gonna pay anywhere from 8,000 to 10,000 on the street. Should it be more than 15,000? If it is, you're at the wrong spot, come here and join us on the street and get the real soy milk. The dish typically comes with pastries. They'll bring you out a little plate. Uh, those do cost. You pay for consumption basically with the pastries. When we think of soy milk, we think of something super watery and, uh, and just, I guess, kind of flat in taste. But the soy milk here is thick as hell. And on top of that, they love sweetening it. And the most common sweetening agent, you guessed it, condensed milk. It's rich, it's warm and it's perfect for that chilly Dalat evening. We hope we were able to help you out with some food recommendations in Dalat. If you know of any other good spots, be sure to drop them in the comments below to help some other people out. We're out. This is the medium? This is the medium? Good. Oh my God. <laughs> There's a pepper in my throat. Beefy, salty, meaty, delicious. The Chinese did rule Vietnam for a little bit, so that's probably... No, not a little bit.